come on in and welcome to my home. Today we are making a simple bread that does not use a bread maker. You're going to be able to do this no matter what you have using simple ingredients that I think you probably already have at home. Really easy. All you have to do is bake this and we're going to start off the easiest way that I know of with three quarters of a cup of warm water. That's not hot water, it's not, it's not, you know, it's warm water. To that I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar and one tablespoon of active dry yeast. Now what I want to do is I want to mix this all up. I'm going to blend this in together. Now you can sprinkle this on, you can do this however you want. Once that is blended together, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let it sit for about four or five minutes so that way I can see bubbles forming and make sure that the yeast is actually still alive and active. It's been about four minutes and yes, my yeast and sugar action is foaming and you can really smell it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into a bowl. I love the smell of yeast, which is funny considering that I do not like the taste of beer. I just love the smell of yeast though. All right, now to that we are going to add one tablespoon of butter and I'm going to work that in just a little bit. And by work it in, I just mean I'm just going to then just sort of chop it up. Then we are going to add about two cups of flour. Does not have to be perfect because you are going to have to pay attention to your day. It's really important because some days you're going to need extra flour, some days you're not. I've got a half a cup of milk right there. You want to mix this up to the point where it starts to what they call follow the spoon. You'll see it starts getting shaggy. I'm going to add a pinch of sea salt. Now if you're anything like me, I always thought that salt killed yeast. It doesn't. It retards its growth. So that way it keeps it from going crazy. Alright, now we're going to add the flour so we have a nice dough. And I'm going to add it a little at a time so that I don't make a huge, huge mess over everything. I have a silicone pad. You can do this on just about any work surface. Then I'm going to sprinkle some flour. A little bit much on the flour there. What we should have is pretty much a nice ball. Now the fun part. Flour up your hands. Get that off there and then we're going to knead it until it's nice and smooth. You might have to add more flour it just so you should knead it till it's no longer sticky and is nice and smooth. I'm making sure to get all that extra flour that's on the board. Working it in, making a mess. If it starts getting really sticky, and this is really going to depend upon your day, is it wet there, is it dry there, but you want a nice smooth elastic dough. Get your hands down in there and really work it. This is probably one of the most forgiving uh, recipes that I've seen. So don't worry if it's not perfect, if everything isn't coming out exactly like you think it should. This is really forgiving. I have a buttered bowl. I'm going to take my bread or my dough, place it in this bowl, then I'm going to cover it and let it raise for about an hour. Put it somewhere that's draft free, then we'll come back in an hour and you'll see how wonderful it is. Our dough is out of the raising part. Woohoo! And it looks great. Now what I'm going to do, punch it down, then I have a nice greased baking pan. I'm just going to put that in there. This time we are only going to cover it for 30 minutes, let it go through a second rise, and then we are going to bake it at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. But I'll show you what it, once it goes through the second rise. Our bread is done with its final rise, so then I'm just going to quickly just do three little slits across the top, and then I'm going to place this into the oven to bake for about 45 minutes. Keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't get too brown, and it will come out wonderfully. If you want a softer uh, crust bread, just brush the outside of the crust with butter. You want to do this once it's done baking and this will help keep the soft crust. But let's go ahead and give this a taste. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put some butter on there. It is nice and warm. Let's give it a taste. That really is good. If you make this, let me know. I think you're really gonna like this bread. It's crusty, it's soft on the inside. Don't forget to subscribe. Every Tuesday is a recipe. And like I always say, why buy it when you can make it yourself?